question today is, when is body armor going to be a drag on your capabilities? So, I'm sure a lot of people already know this, uh, but the first example I want to give is uh, more of, you know, the current times when we have rioting and stuff like that, and actually, you know, small groups of citizens are kind of forming their own pseudo-militia groups, uh, which is fine, uh, but they're typically doing a lot better at good impressions and actually uh, um, doing better for the community and being community-oriented, almost like a reserve force, but uh, that's what I like to see. But anyways, one failing that I see there is, given the situation, given the propensity and likelihood for... Uh, armed conflict, uh, I see them only really wearing helmets, and it may be a budget issue, but they tend to, uh, it seems like they're wearing gear and uh, using weapons that are in a price range that would justify the ability, uh, or be evident of the ability to get body armor, and in those situations where you're in close proximity to any potential enemy forces, you need to have body armor. So there's a few instances where body armor would actually be a drag and um, less than necessary. So one of those is a long movement. So uh, if you're going to be humping on foot in close proximity and stuff like that, or uh, you know, you're going to be moving out and humping uh, long distances, obviously I would estimate that the uh, likelihood of contact is low, or if you are going to get contact, it's going to be sporadic fire or something like that. That's what you see a lot in Afghanistan and stuff like that is uh, you'll typically get uh, the ambushing force uh, being done far away, like 600 meters or so. Uh, so typically the fire is sporadic in the general direction, and even if it is aimed, it is uh, poorly aimed because our exposure is very limited and we're typically you know uh, kind of just on the horizon so and within micro terrain where the likelihood of being hit is low anyways uh, to kind of uh, get going on the conversation is uh, possibly uh, not facing sniper but um, being more uh, able to see threats from far away like in Western uh, in the western United States where you will have more long distance engagements or at least that is um, more likely uh, that would probably be a good time to not really wear body armor but if you're going to be going on long distance uh, patrols or something like that or long distance reconnaissance which I would estimate is the um, you know the larger role uh, then body armor ne may not necessarily be a good idea in that sense and if you do reach contact yeah it would be good to have in case but at the same time distance duration and environment will dictate that and that's one of the examples like pretty much anywhere that I would say body armor might be a bit of a drag but staying stationary like a lot of times with these uh, little armed groups that are protecting shops and stuff then that's not really much of a drag so anyways and the next thing is area of reconnaissance or LPOP. So you're uh, you're offset from the enemy and you have distance. Uh, so unless the unless you're doing like close uh, reconnaissance or something like that, where the likelihood of um, having contact with the enemy is uh, raised, then I would say body armor might again be a drag. And also if you're going to be um, operating in, you know, the woods and your primary objective is stealth and possibly speed, then, again, body armor might be a bit of a drag. So, even when engaging enemy, um, like, MVA and stuff like that, MACV, SOG uh, veterans and uh, LERP veterans, uh, basically, e even if they had the body armor of today, they wouldn't have used it. Typically, it was manipulation of the terrain uh, that they found to be more suitable plus the weight they were carrying uh, in ammunition based on the tactics of that day rarely were they using aim fire because even though they could only see five feet in front of them and even even less depending and so it was more common to go on full auto and do bursts or just cyclic fire and so they had to carry a lot of ammunition because 
Yeah, they were putting out a high volume of relatively unnamed fire, like maybe grazing fire or something like that. So anyways, um, with that said, there's not too many examples, but most of it has to do with the low likelihood of enemy contact. However, if you can get, if you can swing and you have lightweight body armor, it's not, it's not really a bad thing to have it, but uh, again, uh, going on movements and stuff like that where it is really low that you're going to uh, get contact, then, you know, why bother? It can, it can have some effect on diaphragmatic movement and, uh, freedom of movement of the diaphragm and stuff like that, so long distances or speed um, might take precedence. And also, if you are alone, typically speed is your security, and so is stealth. Uh, and that can be kind of hard to do when you weigh a lot. Uh, you kind of are an island being alone, uh, so it's not inconceivable to actually have an individual going out. Typically, you'll see that with Lasers Recon, though they try to go out in buddy teams, but anyways, uh, with that said, I hope you guys uh, got a little bit of something from the video. This is just my knowledge and my uh, evaluation of where body armor would be a drag. So most of the time, I wouldn't see me needing to really use it uh, in the Boogaloo unless uh, I was really worried about um, local threats and the likelihood of engaging them. And uh, if I was going out to try to spot them, that would leave me open to attack or ambush. Uh, so given the distances we have here and the visibility through the brush, uh, likelihood of needing that body armor would be increased, so probably be uh, necessary for me to utilize it. So anyways, leave a comment below, and you guys have a good one.